I'm sure you've heard this a lot today, so pardon me if I'm repeating myself. You do some excellent, truthful acting in Outsiders. We haven't heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. You know, uh, the writing, Peter Mattei, you're uh, performing a script written by Peter Mattei. His writing in this premiere episode reminded me of some writing of Stephen King. You've been in an adaptation of The Green Mile, Ray Bradbury, and Lord of the Flies. Right. What is the spine of Outsiders, and what does it say about the way we are now? Well, I think it's really, I think it's at core, it's about, it's about family, you know? It's fundamentally about family and community and about what, what, what ties people together, what holds people together, and very conflicted individuals. It just happens to be set in this, you know, in a kind of heightened, you know, version of a really fascinating place. And you, you just, you know, the people that you talked about there, the authors you talked yes. about, like Stephen King, Ray Bradbury, um, a lot of their best stories mm -hmm. are stories that feel exactly what you're talking about. They're in a world that we recognize, with people we recognize, and then they take it to a little bit different level. You right. know, and in this we get to go, we have the clan, the feral up there in this mountain that seems to have a kind of energy and power about it, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's still set in a world that is very familiar to us and feels very true and real. And I think what we'll see as, this, as the series goes along is that the world of the town becomes kind of just as heightened as well. And yeah. both, of them, both of them exist on a kind of, you know, I don't want to, maybe it is a slightly Shakespearean kind of plane in mm -hmm. terms of, mm -hmm. you know. But there really are characters individually who are very, uh, very much up against some serious forces in themselves and dealing with their own past, dealing with their own childhood. And as we're seeing with David and, uh, you know, his mother, you know, this kind of intense family uh, disputes. Mm -hmm. Which I love about the script, and I think it's very challenging for the viewer, and we as TV viewers need mm -hmm. something meaty like this. Mm -hmm. Paul Giamatti is one of the producers of the show, and he played John Adams, one of our founding fathers. Right. In that miniseries, you played our founding father, the father of our country, yeah. George Washington. Right. America is about 239 years old, mm -hmm. the United States of America. The Farrells have been on Shea Mountain for a little over 200 years. Right. They're fending off mm -hmm. foreign threats. Mm -hmm. Are they like America in itself? Is there some social relevance to this? I think there's definitely a kind of, you know, there's definitely a kind of, you know, metaphoric reading yeah. if you want to, if you want to take it that way. I mean, I think, well, you know. I was just going to say, just, I mean, you can even look at people right now, you know, the extremes that people are living in right now. Yeah. Just the. The, the, the idea of liberty, what liberty means to different people in this country, and how, you know, off the grid do we want to be um, politically. How we want to get. That's right. And there are people who are way out there. Um, and, and this isn't quite the same mm -hmm. as that, but the idea of liberty uh, and defending yourself, your truth, your community, your family, your ideals is very much a part of this country and having the freedom to do that and how you do that, the extremes you go to, you know, that, that's where things get challenging. And uh, in this story, it's gonna get pretty challenging. Sheriff Wade, to me, almost is like a, a, a voice of reason going up against a corporate mentality, or corporate greed, if you will, when he says- Well, as you know, I've said before, either a voice of reason or a voice of cowardice. He yeah. could be too, you know, I mean, he's, a, he's an interesting character like that. I yeah. think, you know, you know he's, he's not a, he's certainly not, there's no clean cut, like, you know, he's really, tough guy, you know, he's, he's, he's a complex guy. He's really defined by his flaws when we meet him. And he sees what people don't. He, you know, they, they have no money, no microwave, no convenience store, but they stick together. They're a family. He gets it. Um, he gets it because it's, because it's exactly the way people talk about their community in Appalachia. And that was exactly what I found when I went and spent time down there. That was how people talked about it to me. I said, if you go hunting down here, it's not because, you know, people like to dress up and look great and pose with their bucks. It's because you come home, you cut it up and you give it to all your neighbours. Mm. Everybody gets to eat. You get together, you play music together. The, the idea of community is a much firmer thing and it's rooted in family and it's rooted in their past and their traditions down there. And that's what drew me to it. It's talking about a society like that. You know, and Appalachia is just a fascinating place to be talking about telling stories and if you're talking about America. Um, because it defies a lot of the kind of stereotypes of America and then it fulfills others. Obviously, you know, you have, you have poverty in Appalachia, which is quite, quite third world in certain parts of that place. And then you have other places where they just have this rich, strong cultural life. Mm -hmm. 
but but obviously the relationship with things like mining, resource companies and that sort of stuff is a really long-standing thing there.